Hey everybody, this is Ashley with Publish with Ashley, and I'm here to bring you a time-saving tip to create your low-content interiors uh, quickly. And actually, it's really about showing you how to customize an interior you may already have. So you can kind of double the amount of books you have just by customizing and making your interiors a little bit different and maybe more focused on your audience. And remember, the more you can focus on your audience and give them what they want, the more likely they are to part with their money to purchase your product. So here's some time saving tips on PowerPoint. Now, if you like this sort of content about low content, money online, doing printables on Etsy, uh, that sort of thing, then please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, here we are. Here's my cool time saving tip on how to use templates to speed up your, um, I guess, customization is what I would call it. So what I do um, is I create a lot of planners. Uh, this year I only create about 50 or 60. Normally I do about 200, um, but I do create my own planners from scratch. So this is one of my templates that I start out with. So what I usually do is start out with a template that's pretty basic, and then what I'll go through and do is um, I will basically customize the fonts and things like that. So an easy way to do some of these things and to use templates to do customization is what you can do is let me just show you a way to change the font really easy. Yes, you can go and individually change all the fonts, which kind of takes forever. Um, so what I do is you're going to be on the home screen and click on any of the text or anything. I just always click on a text so that it has uh, what I want to change. So if I want to change all this type of text, which is currently Calabria light to something else, I just want to click on it to make sure it'll be the right one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to where you see find, replace, and select. I'm going to next to replace, there'll be a little arrow down. I'm going to click that and you can replace fonts. So all you have to go and do is, um, it says replace Arial. I'm going to actually have to find this Calibri. Luckily, I put it up here so I knew which font this was that I wanted to replace. And I'm going to, it's in the drop down right now, but I could search for it. And I'm going to hit Calibri and then I'm going to pick what font I want to change it to. And this may take a little bit. Uh, different fonts have different sizing, so it can sometimes change how something looks. So you may want to pick something. Um, I know this, I think I've picked this uh, Abito. I'm just going to do the top one real quick. And I'm going to hit replace. And what it's going to do, it's going to go through my entire document and replace anything that has that particular font. Okay, it doesn't look like in this one I have much in that font. So let's say I wanted to change, um, let's do these headings. I know these headings, so I'm going to hit close right there real quick so I can see what this one is. This one is in the Calibri body. Okay, so what I'm going to do again, drop down, replace fonts. Um, I'm going to pick just that one and uh, we'll replace it. Yeah, we'll replace it with the scripty one. So you can go through and pick which works for you, um, which seems to make the most sense. And this might take a while to do if you have that font a lot through your document. Uh, so, you know, just wait a few minutes or however long it takes. This I have this font a lot through my document, so it might just take a few minutes. All right, so you can see that it's done replacing all the fonts, and I've got kind of a scripty font, and it went through and it changed um, these fonts, uh, and right here it didn't change because this is a Times New Roman, and so I could go through and do a replace all if I wasn't happy with the scripty look and then this bold look. Maybe I'd want something a little bit more, um, I could do it the same font or I could do it something a little bit different to make the weekly plan stand out. Um, that's kind of what my goal was when I created these, to have kind of the weekly plan page, like the title heading kind of stand out and then the rest kind of be a scripty look. But I don't really like Times New Roman with this, so I would pick something else. And I could yet again go and do my replace all. But we're gonna talk about master slides. 
And master slides can really help you speed up that individualization and customization of an interior you have so that your interiors, you can make one main one and then you can customize and make a little bit different by changing the font, by changing the graphics, by changing the master slides. So right here, um, I have in the first part, add your own graphics. So this is something I would definitely, you know, take this out and then add a, um, since this is a feminine type, planner, something like a flower or rose or something really pretty that goes with the scripty font I'm looking for. But I'm also going to use a master slide to even further customize this planner. Okay, so how you do that is you go to view and you have go to slide master. And this takes you to the master slide. So, you know, when you add a new slide, there's like the heading slide, title slide, blank slide. I tend to do a lot on blank slides and title slides. Um, so you can see if you hover over the slides, it'll tell you what slides actually use that template. So in this, you can see it's the slide, or yeah, the title slide <laughs> layout, and it's two comma four through 25 and some more, right? So a lot of ones use that. Now, if I scroll down here a bit, I will come to, I think it's this one right here. Yes, blank layout used by slides one, three, 26, and some others. Um, those are the ones I tend to use. Actually, I usually mostly end up using blank slides, but I think on this one, I, I had checked title slide and then I copied. But when you're making it, that is something to think about as far as, you know, maybe you want to use different slides so that you can customize your master slides background. In this case, it's not a big deal um, because I'm only using two and I kind of want all of them to have a background. Um, but that is something to think about when you set up your interior. Do you want different backgrounds? Um, and then if you set out using a particular type of slide, you can easily change the master slide, the background of it. So let me show you how this can be useful. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit insert and I'm gonna insert a shape and I'm gonna use the square rectangle and I'm just gonna basically make it the same size as the page here. Okay, that's the same size. Now I need to go and change the shape outline to no outline so I don't have a blue line. And I'm gonna go click the shape fill and I'm gonna click picture. Okay. And I'm going to use from a file. All right. So I have this nice pattern, floral pattern here that is going to look really pretty as a background. There's a few ways you can do this with the insert shape and I'm just going to insert it and it's going to make it, it's going to stretch it so that it goes across the page. Um, I actually like this kind of look, but if you don't like that, you want it um, not stretched. There is another way to do that. Um, I will show you that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this and I'm going to hit format picture. And there's, there's something I want to show you. So say you do like this, um, you're probably going to want it to look background. So you want to change the transparency. So you make sure this is clicked and then you're going to click on the picture button and go to picture transparency. And then you can change the transparency. Okay. You don't want it all the way, but you want it so that if you had lines running across it or notes, it, it would be pretty instead of distracting. Um, so you just play with that depending on your particular thing and then you have that. Okay, so we're going to go back up. Well, actually, since this is an inserted shape, I'm going to click on it and hit Control C. And now I'm going to go back to the other slide, right? Control V and paste it on. And so now all the slides that are in my planner are going to have this as a background. Okay, the other way to do this, let me show you and I'll um, leave it on this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this. And the other way to do this is like I said, you have this format background open um, and you're going to do picture or gradient and it, See, it filled it kind of like what I had before, but say I don't like this, I don't like it stretched, I can hit this tile picture. And you may think, oh, that's that's really um, big. <laughs> so what you can do is you can change the scale 
and change it to, let's say, let's try 50%. Mm, that's still pretty big. Let's try something like 25%. Mm, let's do a little bit more. So let's go down to 15%. So it's much smaller. It's maybe a little more busy. So it really depends on what look you like. Um, right? This is a little bit bigger and this is a little bit busier. So you can try and see what you like. I'm just showing you those two different methods. The easiest one really is that insert shape. Um, so just as you know. Now let's go back to our view so we can see what these two ones look like. Here's our slide sorter. So we hit view and we're going to go to slide sorter so you can see. Um, this is just kind of the big view. You can go down to normal to see what it looks like. Um, and you can see that it added the different backgrounds. This is the bigger one and see how it kind of looks a little stretched whereas this one does not have quite as stretched appeal. It is a little more busy so maybe you don't like that. It just depends on what you like or don't like. So let me go to the individual view I just double clicked and see how this is kind of blocking. Um, you want to make sure it looks good on all the pages. This one obviously <laughs> that's too much. So what you can do to make that um, right, to make it look good, is you can insert a shape. Okay, so I've insert shape. What I'm going to actually do is highlight that and I'm going to make the shape outline no outline. I'm going to shape fill it with white and then I'm going to send it backwards. In fact, I can probably just send it to the back. There we go. See, now it cleaned it up and I don't have the pattern. So you can do that anywhere that you think um, might need that. Maybe you want to do that a box around here. Um, you know, you can do wherever you would like to clean it up uh, to make it. But you can see on this page, it's kind of pretty in the background. and around here. It's just on the edges and sides so it doesn't detract from where they can do the writing. Uh, so you can play with it and make sure when you set up your planner that you have it or any of your interiors so that you can add things like this to... Um, you could reuse this one and then um, you'll have these whites already done. So what I would do now is if I like this or if I want to go and change one of these I would go back and fix it um, but if once I'm happy with the planner, I hit file, I hit save as, and then I would name this, you know, something like flower backdrop or whatever makes sense to me, right? Okay, and then I would hit save and I would save it as a PowerPoint. And I always like to save it as a PowerPoint so that if I ever need the file, the original file, I can come back to it. And then what I would do is after I saved that, I would go back and hit save as a PDF, save as a PDF, and hit save. Once it's all saved as a PDF, you are good to go and you are able to upload that PDF as an interior. So using um, the replace all for fonts is a great way to customize your planners fairly quickly and change up your fonts. The other way is to use master slides to make different backgrounds. So once I had this all saved as the PowerPoint and the PDF, I could go now and change up um, this backdrop, make something different, save it as a new PDF, save it as a new uh, PowerPoint slide so that I have all the original files with those and then also the PDF interior that I can upload on to KDP. Okay, I hope this was really helpful for you today and I will see you in my next video.